Good evening, Saints Nation. Welcome to another NACE regular season match. Second one here this week, and it's going to be an exciting one. My name is Dan Banner, also known as Banner Broadcaster, or Mr. Danners. Alongside me, we have Amanda Dupuy. Commander, how you doing? Good. How are you doing today? Not too bad, not too bad. A little shooken still after the <laughs> bit of a mess that we saw from the Saints last night. However, different league different team but this one's still going to be a difficult one for st Clair. if i were to guess kettering university had a pretty fantastic game in week one or not week one in round one of nace they're up against northwood who is one of the top seeds in this pool and they brought them to game five so with a team like that this should be a back and forth battle looking forward to it how about you for sure i think our saints are gonna have to really pull out all the stops to uh, get this game to round five, hopefully, and uh, see if either they'll, maybe they'll roll and just do it in three games, or maybe they'll go to a fifth game. We'll yeah, see. It definitely does make it interesting. Like, we had UCA yesterday, of course. That's all best of three. But Nace, everything is best of five. So um, lots of time for teams to adjust. We've got a bunch of different map types as well. I know starting off, or NACE, they do control map as well. We're going to see Oasis for probably the third time this week here. And is there anything in particular, like team comp wise or some or strategy wise, that you think Saints needs to work on? Or was yesterday just a rough day? What do you think? I think it was just a rough day. I mean, right now they played the meta kind of like that brawly dive comp um, that they're really good at, and you could tell that they they work hard at this comp but i think it was just an unlucky matchup you know sometimes you can't win it but i think today um they've been practicing all night all morning and i think they're gonna bring it back for a good game today i definitely hope so because i know during the preseason we got to see them a lot actually during the preseason and it was just win after win after win now as a saints fan of course absolutely loving this but personally i always worry because I feel like a team is only as good as how do they handle their losses. So exactly. this isn't necessarily a feeling that they get uh, to deal with very often. So how do they deal with it is what I'm worried about. But we'll have to see. We're transitioning right into the game right now. And as always, we'd like to give a big thank you to our sponsors, St. Clair College, the Student Representative Council for St. Clair College, the St. Clair Alumni Association, Zuckerman School of Business and IT, PC Outlet, and Tim Hortons. Yes, of course. Big, big thank you to them. These would not be possible. The fact that this varsity team even exists to begin with is a low-key dream come true. <laughs> for sure. Now, looking over at the team for Kettering, looks like playing the tank roles, we got FMR and Lightnail. I'm just going to be calling them light for now on. Okay, uh, we, we got Drock on DPS, Jaggles on DPS, Hydro Seeds, and Backlight as the support players. And it looks like St. Clair is going to go for their uh, more brawly type of dive comp yet again. Uh, as we can see, Strider and Bailable are on Sombra and Reaper. Uh, and Kettering has a similar idea with the McCree and Torbjorn. There's no time to talk about that because the team fight has already begun. Bailable trying to get a pick early, Oof. but it looks like FMR just rolls Bailable. Uh, can they bring it back though? It, oh, it looks like Seymour gets demec. It, it was extremely weird seeing uh, Bailable kind of frontlining there for the team. He ate a stun and he goes down instantly as we ride along here with the yeah. rest of the squad for Kettering as they're able to push off the St. Clair squad, and they're going to get the first flip on to this point. Wow, St. Clair was able to get one pick there, but it looks like it wasn't enough as they get pushed back by Hydro Seeds here on the Lucio. Getting a little feisty with the Lucio. I like it, as long as he can get away with it and not go down. Exactly. We've seen some uh, Reddit Lucios, you know, Frogger-style uh, DPS Lucios. So maybe that's what Hydro Seeds is, but we won't know yet. And we got lots of time to find out. St. Clair finally getting back onto the point as the Kettering University score gets to about 30%. Coalescence Kamehameha through the, both sides of this team, right through the shields. And as they're stacking up a little bit there for Justin, good angle on that Coalescence. Oh. But that EMP, though, from Strider is going to flip this right on its head. Nicely done there 
from them and the rest of the St. Clair squad as they clean up this point. They're going to be able to flip this as soon as they deal with Hydro Seeds. There he goes. See, that's the thing I find with St. Clair is when they when they get that first pick, they're so quick to get the rest of the picks and to win that team fight. They don't waste any time. It's definitely good. At that time, they had much better positioning. The DPS and support line were actually where they were supposed to be. We do see Strider in the back just kind of acting a bit of a nuisance there to Jaggles. Just playing with his armor a little bit, but... Not a ton of damage. Diva Bomb coming in hot, but it's not going to take anybody down for the time being. A lot of point blank here alongside FMR. We do hear the Death Blossom coming out, but it's only going to snag one kill. It's available. It's going to get traded out. Wada is going for a ride there. He's just going to pop that Primal Rage and just charge right in. Just a matter of dealing with Drock and the rest of the squad. Two more down. Chasing him down, but he's almost taken out. Finally going down. Uh... St. Clair seems to be holding the point, although it is a very close fight. Seymour is very low, but Justin's healing him back up. Uh, looks like Seymour is trying to get that pick there, but he keeps going between 100 and 200 health. The Torb Alt is on the point for St. Clair, I do believe. And Strider and Apostle and Bailable all get picked, so it looks like St. Clair might be taking this point as a Demek uh, Light. I don't know how to pronounce the second half of his uh, username there, but we'll go with Light. Yeah, I, that team fight went so long that it actually gave Bailable, who went down extremely quickly in this fight once again. I don't know if uh, Kettering's just been focusing him out or what, but he's gotten taken out really early in two of the three fights so far. But it, this that fight lasted so long that he was able to get back anyway. So... Sinclair able to clean things up. Yustin kept everybody alive for so long. Seymour's just going to eat that thing right into the corridor. Bit of an odd spot, and it's actually going to be Bailable going down once again extremely early. Strider tr looks to try and pop the MP, but I think he goes down in the process. It's going to be up to the tank lines and the support line of St. Clair to try and deal with this. That is going to be the Deadeye up in the high ground from Drock, but it's not going to find its target. Seymour knocked out a mech, and here comes another Diva Bomb. That's a lot of resources actually kind of blown there for the side of Kettering. Watt is going to do his best to try and slow things down, but he's eventually going to get taken down. Bailable showing up once again, just in time to find himself the, to the front of that hammer of FMR. And this is going to get flipped. 95% Saints are going to be trickling at this point. I don't think they have enough time to regroup here, but they do get the touch with uh, Seymour on ball and uh, Lucio touching point here. And Strider zooming in on Tracer, trying to get a pick, but it looks like both Seymour and Apostle go down. Uh, Strider still trying to get a pick, trying not to run into the Torbjorn all on the side of Kettering, and yeah. looks like he's not successful, and that's probably going to be game one, or uh, round one of game one. I mean, you can blink around all you want, that uh, Torbjorn turret does not care, it'll lock on to you anyway, so... It was wise to Strider try and go and see if he could burst that thing down, but he still had to deal with at least five members of Kettering University. So game one, or no, like I said, round one of game number one. Yeah. <laughs> going over into the favor of Kettering. Wow, that was very close match the whole time. It was really a matter of, like, who can get that first pick, and luckily, or, or unluckily Saint, for St. Clair, it was not their time. But they might be able to make a comeback this round, um and do a reverse sweep here for this first game. Yeah, they're going to have to do it the hard way, and let's see what kind of changes they're looking for. I know Bailable likes to drop the turret and then instantly switch, <laughs> or a teleporter rattler. And I mean, that on top of Lucio nearly will guarantee you to get to the point first if, uh, if they're not doing the exact same play back at you. But again... I'm kind of worried for Bailable right now. He's been, like I said before, frontlining as a DPS. Yes, Reaper has some escapes, being able to Wraithwalk and whatnot, but you don't want to just blow that thing for no reason, as we see the rest of the Kettering squad slowly but surely trickling in, trying to take over this point. So far successful. FMR is going to go down. Bailable does find the kill. Everyone from Saints still on site, but it is being contested, so nobody able to get any sort of points going on right now. The tank line for St. Clair trapped on the outside, but thankfully able to break that Maywall down as Jagos, who switched off the Torb to make sure that had that extra obstruction. But now this fight is slowly but surely turning over into the favor 
of Kettering University. Seymour going to try and answer this. He does have the graph, but there's nobody else really with him to try and capitalize on it. And this one is going to go over to Kettering. I'm actually surprised, because I've said in previous games that uh, usually as soon as your Reinhardt goes down, the rest of the team will crumble, but here it looks like the team still went strong without FMR and was able to recap that point, uh, despite Saints still having their tanks alive, even though they were pushed off the point for a little bit. I mean, we have Wombo Combo present potential right here right now, and they're going to look for it. That's going to be the MP alongside the grab. There is no protection right now for this side of Kettering. Bailable going to get the quick kill. Going to take care of FMR once again. But there is the Deadeye up on the high ground, I would assume. Oh, just from across the room there. But Jago's going to go down as Bailable takes care of him. However, Backlight's going to trade out and win the, the Moira battle. Bailable going down. And everybody right now on the side of Kettering. Oops, that's not what I'm looking for. There we go. But... As I fumble, apparently so does Sinclair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Strider's tracking is absolutely impeccable. It's beautiful to watch uh, his point of view there, but it looks like it just wasn't enough for St. Clair to get that that pick or two. The Kettering University still was able to hold on to that point. St. Clair really needs to try to, to cap this point to have a chance at beating Kettering in this round here. And that's the hack, and that's going to be huge a shatter. huge shatter. Kind of frozen up though, however, as we look, Seaboard gets in a really rough spot. Was just taking point blank shotguns there from light. However, St. Clair going to be able to slowly but surely push on to this point. A lot of low health bars on the side of Kettering. If they're not careful, however, they could turn this around, but okay. Hydra Seeds and Jaggles both go down. And Light got demeched there underneath the, the point, so it looks like St. Clair might be able to cap. Oh, they did cap, my apologies. <laughs> Uh, they just need to get light off of the point here. There it and goes. It looks like Kettering is going to have to regroup. Yeah, so 88% on the board right now for Kettering. And they did take their time taking care of light. So this uh, next 66 is going to take a little bit w more time to get to. However, we now have three ultimates ready on the side of St. Clair. And Bailable instantly getting picked up once again. I don't know what's happening here, but that's actually huge. Imagine if they had his uh, Death Blossom right now. That would be absolutely wonderful. But instead, it's going to have to rely on the tank line and the rest of the St. Clair squad and turn this fight in their favor. Very nicely done, considering they basically started this fight 5v6. Justin's uh, Moira play was perfect. He <laughs> went in, got that McCree who was ulting. Uh, and then healed up his tank right before he, he died there. I think that was Prince Wada that he, he kept alive and uh, healed up the rest of his team. So that really turned the tide of that fight there. Oh, so the Diva Bomb is going to come in, though. All right on target. Takes care of Apostle and Seymour instantly. Bailable going to try and finally use the Death Blossom, but at least it's alongside Justin and his Coalescence. Going to try and keep everybody on top and barely hanging on by a thread. St. Clair going to hold this. Wow, Justin is popping off there. Are they going to stagger out this baby diva? Oh. Oh, they may have waited Light. a little too long. Yeah. Strider has to be careful. He's low in health there if he doesn't get back to the point. But it looks oh. like Kettering is going to try pushing in for the, the last push here. They have about seven seconds left, so they have to make a move now. It looks like they're going to do just that, pushing onto the point with the mailed. Is it going to be enough? Looks like, uh, Drock... Oh, my bad. Bailable got a kill on Hydra Seeds there. Although Prince Wada went down, it looks like they're still going strong. Uh, it's a Moira v. Moira on the point a second ago. But May goes down. Diva's almost down. Can St. Clair win this fight? Well, they're getting a couple extra resources, and that grab coming out possibly to seal the deal could definitely secure it. However, we got the Moira v. Moira happening down here once again. Back right, just being such a pain. EMP it's very rare that I see an wow. orb get a double kill, but okay, Justin, nicely done, and that's <laughs> going to somehow give St. Clair round number two of this first game. Considering that was 88 to nothing, the fact that they turned that around was quite huge. Wow. Justin, I'll say it again, Justin almost carried that last fight there as Moira, the last two fights, uh, making sure his team is alive and dealing damage at the same time, throwing that healing orb while dealing damage with the uh, 
I forget the, the ability name, but with uh, his right click. So that was pretty that was pretty good. Now they're on the, the third round here, and it really could go either way with Kettering or St. Clair. A little purple beam of doom, basically. Just slowly <laughs> yeah, exactly. but surely taking it away. Now, all down to this final one. Or round three of game number one, rather. Very close game so far. Like, it could really go either way. Both yeah. teams have so much talent and skill. Is what I like to see. <laughs> so it looks like there's a fight on top of the point right now, kind of. This is a weird position. They really all just stuck themselves up there. Drock is going to take care of Yusin before this even gets started. And now it seems all Bailable downhill down from here. here. Unless... Oh, yeah, Bailable goes down as well. And, okay, it's just a matter of time here before uh, Kettering cleans this up. Strider going to barely get out of his life, but I don't think Seymour is going to be so lucky. As they slowly but surely play around with the Baby Diva, taking him down. And, yeah, Apostle's forced to retreat. So this was initially going to be going over Kettering. That's okay. St. Clair has lots of time to try to cap, and Kettering has lots of time to... Oh, oh. what on earth? Oh, wait, what? Uh, did he get thrown there? I think he got booped by D.Va into the, the highway. Just got booped into traffic. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something you see every day, but Strider getting picked out basically to make a staggering this next fight here for St. Clair, of course. For those who may not know, when I refer to a stagger, that's like referring to the fact that there's not going to be an even 6v6 fight for the next little bit. But here comes the coalescence, and this is a rough corridor to try and surround yourself in. They're going to be able to make it onto the point right through the front door, basically. And Yasin's going to be able to turn this around. Diva Bomb coming out. But how many players will get caught? Nobody. St. Clair going to completely turn this on its head after just choosing not to take that... Uh, that right stairway. Wow, and Bailable got his revenge it. there. <laughs> That's good. He needed it. I'm glad to see him on the board because Drock specifically has just seemed like it had his number so far. <laughs> Looks like he was dancing there for the stream. <laughs> <laughs> dancing around the sticker, of course. Exactly. Looks like Seymour's trying to deal a little bit of damage from afar. Oh, where was the Eva bomb? It looks mm. like FMR is going to this and. Uh, it's not gonna do any damage. Jangles gets a kill available. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, they're gonna have to watch out for the McCree ultimate here, real quick. Um, and it looks like FMR shatters our St. Clair team, and Hydra Seeds get a pick on Hostel, and now the entire team is just cleaning up St. Clair. Yeah, just a matter of time here. There it goes. Yeah. It's all good, they're about even right now, so if St. Clair can regroup, they'll have enough time for another push or two. And uh, Kettering University just has to hold the point for another push or two as well, so really could go either way. I'd, I'm just entertained watching this. I'm having a hard time figuring out what to say just because I'm, I'm so intrigued by this game. Absolutely, I'm trying to get to the best angle of this stuff because it just seems like every before every team fight happens, somebody gets picked off, and that is an unusual one. The flame strike coming out from FMR actually taking out Justin once again. So, seventy-five percent and ticking. Can Sinclair get regrouped for probably one more push? By the time they get there, it's about to be ninety percent. So, they need to move. For sure, it's their best bet to regroup for this last push here. It's rather, it's better getting in with a 6v6 rather than a 5v6 dying and then having to try to scramble in that last moment. But they're going to need to touch here. They have 5% left. Uh, Bailable trying to get a pick on the Rhine and he succeeds. Trying to get a pick on Drock with the Death Blossom on the point. Just absolutely annihilating Kettering University. Chasing after Jaggles and it looks like St. Clair is going to cap this point. Oh, good thing, because we seen yesterday St. Clair unfortunately make a bit of a flub trying to make contact with that point. I was worried that we would see something similar, but they finally they just charge on to the point, bailable, basically solo halting the um, the McCree player, Drock, but getting him off the point got yeah. rid of that stun, so that was actually huge, and it was able to get St. Clair this team fight in their favor. Looks like he got like three or four kills there. That was kind of crazy. 
Oh, it looks like he is going after FMR, but he has to be careful because, as we've seen, FMR has killed him quite a few times this game. Uh, he's really good with that Ryan Hammer, so... But it looks like Yustin gets a, an easy pick here. Um, they're all going after Light. Drop gets another ultimate, and... That was huge. Succeeds. Yeah. It got rid of the support line, got rid of Strider, and just got rid of the Saints. 99.99, extremely close, but it's going to be no cigar here for St. Clair. Kettering University going to take game number one. Nice back and forth game, but able to secure it this time by. That was insane. I thought St. Clair was going to get it for sure there with uh, Bailable's ultimate, but it looks like not this time. Maybe next point, though, as we've seen before, teams who've succeeded. I mean, I've said it before, in Overwatch League, typically you see teams that are really good at those control point maps. Not so great at the payload maps, but will it be the case here? I don't know. We'll see if uh, Kettering can own the payload map just like the control point or if it will go to St. Clair. Well, I'm hoping that's moving forward to the next one, which should, in theory, be an escort, I do believe. It's not selected just yet, but we'll have to see if, one, if the map type does make the difference, like you were saying. But I know something I personally am worried about is not only did they lose yesterday in extremely convincing fashion, but now that's another loss. It's yeah. it it can kind of shake you a little bit, gets you gets you scared, or lose your confidence, and let's just hope that. Well, of course, we've got the coaching staff for a reason, right? He's got Q is the man of the game plan. Get everybody on board. It looks like Dorado is going to be the game or the map for game number two, yeah. and we're actually not going to waste any time. We'll hop into that right away. Perfect. I know uh, the Saints crew really likes Dorado because when we play scrims, that's typically the map that they choose, or one of them at least. So we know we're they're very comfortable with it. So hopefully they'll be able to secure a win on this point, but could go to Kettering as well. Who knows? We'll have to see. Yeah, between Dorado and Kings Row, I don't know which one is the the more Saint Clair map at this point because I know. <laughs> Between the last season, season and a half, we've seen a lot of them. Yeah, exactly. King's Row is one of their favorites as well. So, we will see. Looks like St. Clair is going to go with more of a... Actually, I don't know. <laughs> they have a, a Ryan Diva, a Maeve McCree, and a Moira Lucio. Um, and it looks like Kettering has... Almost a mirror comp of that, but with the Ash and Torbjorn uh, instead. I mean, it's nice being able to go on defense, get the high ground for yourself with uh, with Ash, and just have huge sight lines across the entire defending area. But we'll have to see if we have Strider looking to possibly match that. You had mentioned the team switch up here for not necessarily the tank and the supports, but the DPS. Curious if it's a map specific thing or if it's just to try something different. For sure. We know Bailable is pretty good at that May, so we'll have to see uh, if he can make a big difference with that. And it looks like Bailable already got rid of Jaggle's turret, but the fight is still going on. Bailable gets another pick, and that is on Jaggle's. So, sorry, he gets a pick on Jaggle's himself instead of just his turret. And Yustin is trying to keep up with the heals on Prince Wada and the rest of his team. But they're pushing them all the way back to the the end of the first point here. Yeah, it's kind of looking like a best case scenario here for St. Clair's attack. Didn't lose anybody, but you would mentioned Jaggle's getting taken down before the team fight even really got started, making this the 6v5 for Saints, but we do have the Kettering University squad finally jumping onto point, but Jakey gets frozen. Note actually that Jakey is playing the Reinhardt now, so that's a little bit different. It's no longer... Oh! FMR is no longer in this game, FMR. actually. That is extremely odd now that I think about it. But that's going to be a nice little shatter there. Yeah. That's from Wada. Takes care of it, and St. Clair going to roll over and take the first checkpoint. That happened so fast. Like, really fast for that first point. Usually, the first point, I find, is, is quite difficult to get past if, uh, if you can... Uh, if you can believe it, it, it can be difficult. But it looks like St. Clair does not care about that, and they already got past the first point. Now it's their next objective is getting to the second point. We'll see if Kettering can hold them off, or if St. Clair will push all the way through. 
Yeah, before St. Clair even got under that bridge, they had themselves at 6v5, so it was odd that they just, like, gave it up right after that, but of course, they were a player down, so it's a little bit rough to have to deal with. Bob coming in clutch, actually, taking a big chunk out of the support line of St. Clair. Yussin going down, and it looks like Bob's actually just going to go on a killing spree, why don't he? Nicely done, finding four so far. Jagel's going to put a couple additional limbs on his scoreboard. And finally, Kettering going to get themselves some breathing room as they stop this push. Seymour did the right thing there by backing up. He knew the rest of my team has gone down. I need to get out and fast. Uh, even though he got demeched, he was able to get back with his team. And it looks like St. Clair is completely regrouped, ready for this next fight against Kettering. Although Kettering does have the high ground. So we'll see. Yeah, it's a bit of an awkward spot for St. Clair to try and continue to push forward to. However... Other than Lex, there's not really anybody who could really abuse this high ground too badly, but this is going to hurt. Apostle going to go down. There's the Shatter for good measure on top of it as well. Nicely done, considering that uh, Wado was trying to protect from the Diva Bomb. Left himself wide open, and that's going to be a little bit devastating towards St. Clair. However, a bit of a back-and-forth battle here. Blacklight going to get on to this, the kill board using a, that Coalescence, going to himself a double and it's going to push St. Clair back for the time being. But that was actually surprisingly close. Yeah, the kill feed looks like a checkerboard there for a few mm. moments. Let's see, they're regrouping. Uh, Seymour does have Diva Bomb available and Yustin has Coalescence, so they might use it this push. Although Jagels does have uh, May Ult, and we're going to see both of those ultimates being pulled out right now. Uh, and Jakey is eliminated by Apostle. Okay, bit of a rough spot. Wada's going to fire the Shatter, but I don't think that actually got anybody. So it's going to be a bit unfortunate seeing that that ult go to waste, but is what it is. Sinclair still on the cart for the time being. Bailable trying his damnedest to hang on to this. However, the support line of Kettering as well as uh, Light is right there trying to slow things down. Jakey is back. Reinforcements have arrived. Oh, this is actually a nice little wall there from Bailable going to separate... Jakey from the rest of his team, but Blacklight going to come in clutch here, it looks like, taking away one of the supports on the side of St. Clair. And Prince Wada is back. Oh, and he gets eliminated again. So it really is back and forth right now with Bailable jumping back and forth, trying to freeze this D.Va, but he has to be careful because we've seen before that they're really good at picking off those DPS who move a little too close to the front from Kettering University. A bomb on point takes care of Bailable as well as Seymour. So that's going to shut this one down in its tracks. Two minutes to try and get something done here. Yasin just going to fall off the edge just so he can regroup with his team. But as soon as we've made it to this archway, it's been pretty well impenetrable defense from Kettering. Well, inside of Kettering here, they do have access to that high ground. They have access to a lot of the area, while St. Clair has to kind of funnel into one or two areas to try to make this push. So this is a very difficult point on this map, but if they can get past here, then it should be fairly smooth sailing until the end. Uh, Seymour's getting a little bit ahead of everybody, just trying to stand some ground. So far, so good. However, now that Jakey's up here, it could be a little bit nerve-wracking. Here comes everybody else on the side of Kettering, however. Gonna just chase him through the, the hallway, it looks like. Yasin running for his life. They're right on their tail. Coalescence coming out, I believe that is from B Blacklight, who's able to get a bunch of kills on the on the scoreboard with that alt in this game alone. Very rough very spot to try and be in. Uh, very interesting fight location. Oh, and they take out Jakey and Jaggles in this fight, so St. Clair might be able to push this payload with 40 seconds left on the clock. Um, can Kettering regroup before St. Clair... Oh, and it looks like there's going to be a McCree alt from... Is that oh, St. Clair? That, yeah, that, that was Strider. Strider. Yeah. My bad, they Kettering played uh, McCree last map, so I did not realize. Yeah, he was hiding under the archway, and that might have been enough to do it. St. Clair slowly but surely taking care of the Kettering squad. They're going to find themselves this second checkpoint. Wow, that was... Extremely close. That was such a weird fight location, too, on top of the stairs there. I've never seen that. I feel like that should have got punished so hard, and it just straight up didn't. I think both teams yeah. were so shocked that they were actually battling in that little that little hallway that... Uh, yeah. Like, just all sense of uh, 
all game sense just got thrown away, but it worked out so far for St. Clair. It's going to be Seymour trying to move this thing around. The rest of St. Clair are on the high ground. So we follow through. Strider taking care of Lexi instantly. And that's going to be a Diva Bomb coming out from Light. It's not going to hit its mark, however. The Blizzard coming out from Jaggles. Oh, a bit of a messy spot, but Strider once again with the Deadeye is going to make it a little bit difficult to try and contest that card. St. Clair are winning this fight. Ooh. They're going to be able to tear them up for the time being and push this thing. Bailable just punching everybody. <laughs> Getting the kills that way, that's quite interesting. Prince Wada trying to hold them off as the rest of his team carries that cart to the final point. But it looks like it may not be enough. Blacklight uses Coalescence and Prince Wada gets a huge shatter. Oh. But Jakey says no and shatters him back. Gets Apostle and Prince Wada in... Oh, it looks like St. Clair is starting to fall apart. That was rough. The counter shatter was huge. St. Clair forced to run away with 10 seconds left. I don't think they're going to have enough time to actually get a regroup on this either. So it's up to Seymour or somebody on the St. Clair side to try and touch this thing, keep it into overtime. Seymour just went down, however. Is anybody going to be able to make it? They are not. So just outside the door of the third checkpoint is where they're going to have to hold to get I'm the win. I'm surprised they made it all the way right next to the end there. It looked like there's quite a few times where Kettering was gonna wipe them off the map and go into the next round, but they they uh, just kept going. Yeah, looking at it, it wasn't that far away from the third checkpoint, so an overall solid push. However, I know looking at in between point one and two there, St. Clair were held up for so long. And if they're going to have to be forced to try and hold them off, like, similarly, that makes me a little nervous. But at the same time, sure, they can get it done. We just got to see what they want to do. Of course, Kettering, don't have to make it all the way just into the box in order to score to win here in this second game. The one advantage St. Clair does have going into this round is that very, very close uh, finish. So hopefully that gave them some confidence to be able to get their head back in the game and... Um, maybe win a map this uh this game back from yesterday they didn't win any maps but today maybe they will get themselves a little bit of a confidence booster absolutely exactly like you said it's about how you lose and uh looks like they made a pretty good comeback so far but kettering might be able to just push right past them and get to the third point Oh, nice little combo. We oh. got the Orisa Hog coming out here from the side of Kettering, and it's actually already demecked and killed off Seymour. Wow, that happened so fast. I was not expecting that. They're going to have to be really careful. It looks like St. Clair's backed up just a little bit to try to um, compensate for that early loss. I mean, we did not see either of those tanks the entire game so far. Granted, it was only one game, but still, St. Clair not expecting that in the slightest, and Hydro Seeds, nicely done, making that Lucio gun work for him. Takes care of Strider, and they're getting through this archway a little bit a little bit slower than what St. Clair did, but at the same time, still quick enough to the point where St. Clair has to be nerved, nervous at least a little bit. Bailable trying his best to just mess with the tank line. And that's going to be a nice little shatter there coming out from Wada. The rest of St. Clair going to just chase them down. The wall is going to stop them. And okay, they do manage to get themselves a team wipe here. They leave no survivors, St. Clair. When they push past, they'll get every team member. Nobody can retreat to spawn. Justin does have a coalescence available, though, for this next fight. And Bailable has his May ult. Uh, but it looks like Kettering doesn't have anything but coalescence really ready. Almost a May ult, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Absolutely. And this is a rough spot to have to try and deal with either the Blizzard or the Coalescence. Nice uh, Maywall there from Bailable to totally block my sight at this view. And here we go. The Coalescence coming out as well as the Blizzard. And this is getting absolutely messy here on both sides. But it's looking like it's turning into the favor of St. Clair slowly but surely. It's Prince Wada winning the Rhine duel and everybody else on the side of Kettering forced to run for the hills. Uh, Light able to re here. Is he going to... Is he trying to peek after they lost? Oh, he's just waiting for the rest of his team there. Um, oh, actually, he is going in alone a little bit, but that is a bit of a risky move, so he has to be careful. Uh, Bailable trying to get that snipe shot with the, the May Ice. 
but it looks like he's going to be safe there. It felt like a little bit for the side of Kettering that they weren't exactly 100% sure what they wanted to try in regards to their tanks and their DPS. We've already had three hero switches on the side of Kettering, so a lot of alt charge just basically thrown away unless they used it prior. But now they're going to jump right in. We're going to ride along with Bailable as he's point blank here with the tank line. Trying to freeze Jakey in the process. Gets a shield up, but it's not going to be enough. Strider with the pulse bomb as well as Yustin's Coalescence. Going to get two on the board. And once again, just a matter of chasing them down. And these walls are just coming in clutch, making these staggers huge for St. Clair. Nicely done, Bailable and the rest of the squad. But watch out for this diva bomb. This could be a little bit scary. It finds two. Oh. This could be the opening that Kettering University were looking for to bring this thing all the way to the first checkpoint. I guess it's true that it's not over till it's over because uh, right as you're coming back after winning the fight, they could surprise you with a move like that. And it looks like Kettering did do that to St. Clair. St. Clair desperately trying to regroup uh, with the last few meters here. And it looks like Apostle's going to pop beat to try to stall out this point uh -oh. uh, with Prince Wada in there. But they get frozen by Jagel's mail. Apostle still going with Yustin and Bailable with the counter mail freezing everybody, getting rid of Jakey, Hydro Seeds gets Strider, and Demex Seymour, and Light gets Apostle, Let's get Seymour, and it looks like Kettering might be able to cap this point. I think Prince Walda's backing up there to meet up with this team, and, and they're gonna give them this point here. And the fact that all of that started from, oh, my team fight just lost, let's just yeet a D.Va bomb over into the defenders <laughs> and see if this works. Light <laughs> with, uh, the play that feels like you know those you know those plays that seem so silly that sometimes it just works yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. what that felt like right there and it just paid dividends right there for Kettering they had 10 seconds left on their entire clock before they got that first checkpoint so thankfully for Kettering they get two more minutes since they've got the first checkpoint but they have to get this all the way to the seconds within that next time slot so a little bit nerve-wracking here for the side of Kettering. All the pressure is on as we ride point-blank in here as we see a massive shatter from Wada to turn this thing around. They have to watch out, though, because Light does have his Diva Bomb again, and... Oh! He gets stunned oh. and demecked by Seymour and Prince Wada, the Dream Team duo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Of all spots to go down and have your Diva Bomb, being stuck in that little corridor is like the absolute worst case scenario. You pop that thing, exactly. there's absolutely no sight lines anywhere. So St. Clair going to be able to turn this around nice and quick. Minute 20 on the clock now for Kettering. St. Clair not giving them any room. They're going to have Wada standing essentially right on the track. But Bob's going to come out to play right away, but that angle's a little bit off, actually. Seymour, we're going to just trade Diva Bombs at this point. It's going to oh get goodness. Jaggles, but nobody on St. Clair's side is going to go down from Light's Bomb. However, here comes the uh, the beat drop from the side of Kettering, just to keep everybody alive just a little bit longer. The Blizzard is a little bit off-putting, actually, on the side of St. Clair. It's not going to catch anybody, but that's just the zoning alt, right? As we just brawl right in this little stairwell. Wow, St. Clair finally going to get it. Corner there. Oh, yeah. looks like Lex is going to chase out St. Clair, though, right behind them, but they, <laughs> they realized he was there at the last minute. There was not... Seconds. Yeah, he couldn't really go anywhere else, so you know what? Might as well see if you can get a cheeky pick. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Build, build a little extra alt charge, too, while you're at it. But... Uh, Kettering's got to be sweating right now. We have 20 seconds on the clock. They are regrouped. All six are here. So we're going to have an even team fight. We have the Blizzard from Jaggles and the uh, the Shatter and Beat Drop here on the side of St. Clair. Strider almost has his... Uh, That's right in the shield. Oh. Ooh. Prince Wanda gets a pick on Cheeky. That might be just enough to start off the fight. But uh, Jaggles does pop his Blizzard. Doesn't seem to hit anybody. There are diva bombs. There are alts going off everywhere. Uh, it's just a back and forth fight. Justin gets eliminated. And Bailable and Strider get picks on the enemy team, Kettering. Uh, but it really is back and forth. It looks like St. Clair is up a few, but like it's so hard to tell. There's just so much happening. Uh, Bailable pops his alt. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> wow. wow. That grav just turned this entire thing around. Overtime now. That was, 
That was insane! St. Clair yeah. has to regroup and try to stop them before they can reach the, the end of the second point to be able to uh, end that overtime and win this this uh, game two. Oh. Looks like they're all regrouped. Yeah, they're going to be right there to meet them at the second checkpoint. One member of Kettering has to be on this card at all times. Otherwise, that is going to be GG for game number two in St. Clair's favor. However, there are a lot of used resources, not much used. Justin's Coalescence is the only ult on deck until Wada just shows the shatter out of nowhere. RKO finishing off the team, it looks like. Just a matter of dealing with Jakey. And that will do it. Sinclair getting game number two. That game was insane. It just seemed like right when somebody was going to win, somebody else took over, you know, like... I'm I'm honestly speechless from that match. I don't I don't know what to say. Ooh. There was so much happening. It was hard to commentate because I there was just alts left, right, and center, abilities being thrown. It's it was a really good game. Yeah, you know those moments where like you're you're picturing out the battle ahead of time. You're looking at the alt charges, it's like, okay, so probably this alt's gonna be used, this, this and that. But the fight goes so long that everybody just gets their alt at some point or another. <laughs> that's yeah, what exactly. that that's what that felt like back and forth. There was multiple times where it felt like Kettering should have been done. And just somehow they turn it around for one more try. One more try. Like, oh, there's three people on the point and one of me. Oh, I got a sick graph. Okay, let's let's go for it. And it was a fantastic battle. And sure. St. Clair showing signs of life here. So 1-1 one, one, going into game number three of a best of five. So you and I are going to be tired at the end of this one, I feel like, because we're going <laughs> all the way, I feel. I'm, exactly. That's what I'm guessing anyway. And wow. I, I think this is going to be their best game yet, to be honest, out of both of the leagues they're playing. And I'm just on the edge of my seat the whole time. I really don't know who's going to win today. Mm -hmm. And I know I've said it many times on the casting desk. We may be here for St. Clair. They may be our hometown squad. However, I like to see a good challenge. I don't like watching blowouts every single night for like two, three weeks straight. I like seeing them actually have a challenge. And right now, we saw yesterday it was a bit of a blowout in the reverse fashion. But this, this is the kind of match that I was looking for. And I'm very excited as we get ready to go into game three. Eichenwald is where we're going to be going. So hybrid, catch one point, push the cart the rest of the way. It's the name of the game. What do you think about this map? Eichenwald is such a, a beautiful point, honestly. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting game to see for sure because there's just so many, there's so many like little high grounds and hiding spots that uh, you can really take advantage of if you know how to use them. And both teams seem to be extremely high level players. So maybe they know something we don't. The, amount, see it. the amount of times I've been picked off from the top of the castle is absolutely infuriating right uh, after no, that first doing. point. But... Looks like we're not wasting any time once again. Let's get into game number three of this best of five. Kettering University and St. Clair College giving us a show here this evening. And we'll get to see what happens. We don't get to see this map too often for the collegiate scene. St. Clair doesn't really pick it that often. At least, I believe that's the case anyway. I could totally be wrong. Somebody fact check me in the chat if you wish. I think uh, we haven't seen Eichenwald yet. Oh, and it looks like they swapped uh, Jakey for FMR on the Reinhardt there yet again. That's one of the things I saw last game. I didn't really talk about it, however. That was a very odd switch, in my opinion. Like, I mean, Jakey did fine. Don't get me wrong. A lot of the things that did, like, well, they won the first one. So maybe just getting the sub some extra time in the hot seat was a good idea. He performed well. For sure. But we're going to see FMR hop back into the tank seat. See what happens here as St. Clair gets ready to go on the attack with pretty similar to what comp they ran in the second game. However, Strider's back on that Sombra. I do like to see Strider on that Sombra because he never fails uh, to surprise us. Never disappoints. Um, and it looks like he's going to go right into the, the enemy's uh, front uh -oh. line here. Oh! <laughs> that Maybe was... not the best time oh. to not... <laughs> yeah. That was actually a cheeky little pick. They just sprayed into the hallway just in case. Got a piece of him, revealed him from stealth, and were able to take care of it from there. However, the rest of the St. Clair aren't really too far behind here and have not lost their stride as they slowly move forward, get onto this point. 
in a point blank battle. This might not be too bad here for St. Clair. And it looks like we got two already. Wada is going to go down to light, however. Both Reinhardts are down right now, so the teams, it's really an even fight, but it looks like Jaggles gets a pick on Apostle. Um, so now St. Clair is down one, and now they're down two. So it looks like Kettering is going to hold this point as Seymour gets frozen, and the rest of the team is pushed off the point and or killed. Dang, nicely done there from Kettering. Of course, when you're on defense, you feel like you have to run an absolute eternity to get back into your proper position. However, they are able to do a, a much better job in the 4v4 than St. Clair did while they were waiting on their reinforcements. So able to turn that back around. St. Clair nearly got the first third of the point captured. But going to have to go from scratch here as they barely missed. Oh, and it looks like uh, Justin pops a coalescence, but Drock is ulting, and May is ulting on the side of Kettering. Um, it's kind of a checkerboard in the, the, the kill feed right now, but I think Kettering is up one. But St. Clair still has a chance if they're willing to fight here. They might want to back out, though, because Drock gets another pick on Seymour, and they're chasing down... Uh, who is that? <laughs> That's Strider. My bad. Well, oh, Strider did make the switch over to the McCree, so Sombra is done for the time being, it looks like. And then St. Clair farmed some alts, but at the same time, it looks like Kettering kind of farmed more. We have four ready to go compared to the three on St. Clair at oh, this Oh, St. Clair moment. now has four. Oh, I eat my words. That Diva Bomb, however, is a bit of an odd spot, and that put a lot of St. Clair's members in a terrible position. This is just going to get run down, chase them down, secure themselves that team wipe. Nicely uh, done like from it's Kettering. Some, like it's some whack Diva Bombs there. Really uh, surprising St. Clair with these unpredictable bombs. So they're going to have to be on the lookout at all times. But it looks like St. Clair is almost all six alts as Yustin's coming up on heads. And as I say that, Light eliminates Yustin early into the fight, so St. Clair is going to have to back up a little bit and regroup before getting into the next uh, fight with Kettering with a minute left on the clock. Uh, Yustin, I think he was doing a decent job of trying to hide from losing that last engagement, but before he got the chance to get back to his tanks, did go down. Only 50 seconds on the clock here. St. Clair have to move before Yustin's nearby. It's going to be the Deadeye from Strider actually coming out, and it's going to be on top of a grav. See if we can get a better look at this here. Is there's a freeze or a frozen guy right there? We have a double oh. shatter, and it's going to knock down two each. But now the blizzard from um, from the side of Kettering from Jaggles was absolutely perfect position for Saint Clair to, to squirm in their boots as they try to stay onto this point. They do manage to get the first piece, and they are finally going to be able to clean this up. It looks like one more on the point. Just a matter of dealing with light who's going to fall down and just get instantly taken out. Okay, 10 seconds on the board. St. Clair getting it, going to get themselves some additional time. That was close. Oh my goodness, that was a, that was a, a very quick cap there for St. Clair. I'm going to sleep well tonight because uh, I've been just talking like crazy because these fights have been just one way or another. Hey, that's how you know you're doing it right. Keep it up. <laughs> exactly. Might as well uh, be varsity athletics with... Uh, <laughs> the amount I'm talking here. <laughs> hey, you never know in the future. But next engagement <laughs> happening. Yustin going to just take down Hydro Seeds nice and quick. Diva Bomb in a really odd spot once again. This time it is not going to pay off for Light. Nobody going down. Drox trying to get the flank. Gets to jump onto Wada. Not going to go into his favor. Here comes Strider with a dead eye of his own. Jumps in. Everyone's going to be behind a wall or a shield, so everyone is going to be A-OK -okay for the time being. FMR the only casualty. There goes Jaggles as well. Slowly, Slink Claire moves forward to just try and push this cart as far as they can. Just it really seems like St. Clair is good at this escort-style map. It's just capping that point in the first place is what's difficult for them. Definitely agree with you on that one. Now, they are only leaving back... One member. Apostle's the only one there to try and push this thing, so it's not moving very fast. Oh. They do not have their Lucio here, but that Maywall is going to shut down any sort of sneaky attack that Kettering wants to do. And between Yustin and the rest of the St. Clair squad, St. Clair going to wipe this one fast. Yustin with one pick after another. Who says wow, supports can't frag? <laughs> exactly. Wow. 
Seymour does get taken out by Hydra scenes with the boop there, but yeah, Yustin uh, avenges. Oh, we got two. Yustin avenges one of his teammates though. Uh, Blacklight kind of caught by Prince Wada there, uh, but everybody's kind of everybody's pushing in despite being. Oh, my bad. Kettering has four people right now. St. Clair is five or six. St. Clair is going to chase them down a little bit, but also try to move that payload as far as they can with the two minutes I have remaining. Man, what Hydro Seeds did there was so cheeky. Apostle was the only one pushing the cart for the longest while. Hydro Seeds just runs up there, boops him off. If St. Clair wasn't paying attention, the timer was getting kind of low. They could have like lost this from not touching the cart. But in the meantime, we do have the battle continuing. Strider manages to have himself another Deadeye, but it's not going to get anything except the mech from Light. This Blizzard is pretty well right on target. Jaggles is going to answer with a Blizzard of his own, trying to at least even this up a bit. Wada the only casualty. Yustin going down as well, actually. This could be the turnaround that Kettering needs to give himself a little bit of breathing room. And they are going to win this one with Blacklight getting the final kill with that orb. St. Clair really only has uh, Shatter right now, and they're coming up on Coalescence. And B Kettering has three ultimates. They have uh, Coalescence, they have Diva Bomb, and they have Shatter. So St. Clair has to be really careful going into this fight because their ult economy is not as good as Kettering's. So they have to use their ultimate <laughs> almost <laughs> wisely and uh, make sure they don't get staggered out too much. Oh, that's that actually huge. Second. Huge pick by Bailable on Blacklight, uh, but it looks like that Diva Bomb didn't get anybody. Justin getting a pick on FMR. Kettering is down two. Justin gets another pick on Jaggles, and now it's a 6v3. Uh, St. Clair trying to clean up desperately. Seymour gets a pick on Grok, and Strider gets a pick on Hydro Seeds. Oh, <laughs> and it's just no. St. Clair just just kill after kill right now in, in the feed. Kettering are going to try and slow this down so they can actually group everybody up, but they don't have the time to really do so. A nice kill from Bailable to get rid of Jaggles right away. B Jaggles had a blizzard that would have been absolutely huge, but the shatter coming out from Wada on point as always. The grab coming out from Seymour as well just to lock down some additional members. We got Strider up in the high ground going to secure the kill onto Light. Just a matter of dealing with the trickling coming out here, but Jaggles is back with the blizzard does Whoa. not matter wow that <coughs> that end fight there there was just so many things happening at once again like i said they always they never failed to to uh, amaze me with just the sheer amount of like back and forth ultimates and like the counter to your counter to your counter insane god uh they are absolutely on point. And one play that I want to point out there, when we were battling a little bit over here before we got to that final spot, the fact they took care of Blacklight before the team fight like really got underway, he had Coalescence ready. An ultimate was ready to go. When, when they were over here, they took out Jaggles, had a Blizzard available. Imagine how much more useful that could have been if he actually had a team to follow up on it instead of just using the Blizzard like rushing back to point and nobody else being alive but you. That exactly. was a crazy turn of events there for St. Clair, allowing them to get that third point. Just unlucky on the side of Kettering there. Uh, but they look like they're going to try a Winston-Zarya combo. We haven't seen any Winston yet today, I don't oh, think. Oh, are we diving? Oh, and Ball. Yeah, it looks like Winston... Winston Hog, maybe? They're kind of switching between Ball and Hog right now. Uh... Looks like they're going to stick with the hog. Well, I mean, you would pointed it out too that St. Clair just seemed like they had a hard time with the control portion of this map. If they, if Kettering are able to surprise St. Clair and secure themselves that very quick uh, control point capture, they would have so much extra time in the bank just to worry about pushing all the way to the third point. So switching with something cheeky like a... Uh, a Hog Winston would have been cool. However, we're not going to actually see that today. But halfway through my thought, they switched it up on me. F's in chat. But it is what it is. Okay. And it's going to be available going down extremely quickly. Drock going to secure the first kill of this round. But the Sinclair squad charging in. They're going to get ready to try and defend this point. But actually, they're halfway done the capture already. Really brutal on the side of Kettering. Nicely done. We do have the Coalescence coming out. But this is just going to be offensively here from Blacklight. This is going to be essentially the cleanest attack I've seen here on Eichenwald. And wow. that is going to get rid of this control point extremely quickly. I guess they could just go with their guns instead of trying to do something sneaky. 
and it looks like Bailable already gets picked off by Blacklight. Uh, we have a mirror matchup this this round here, I do believe. So it really is it's up to who's most proficient in these heroes, um, rather than what counters what. It's really just gonna be it's gonna be more of a, a skill based game, I do believe. But as I say that, Bailable picks up picks off light. Um and they're gonna try to St. Clair's gonna try to push in on Kettering right as this fight is about to start. FMR got stunned there for a moment, but that didn't stop him. Backing up, holding a shield for his team, he gets taken down. Uh, and St. Clair is going to win this fight and hold the payload right here underneath the, the archway. Dang, nearly pushing them all the way to the spawn. Only one nearby is Druk, who's doing something a little bit cheeky up here. Let's go see what he's up to. Oh, St. Clair knows he's there. Okay, he's on the run. He's running. Actually, if he's not careful, uh -oh. he's going to get himself a pick. Nicely done from Drock. That might start off the fight here. Looks like FMR is just furiously swinging his hammer, uh, hoping St. Clair will accidentally drop down into it. You want to contest this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Can you uh, touch a payload when I'm swinging my hammer around the radius of it? Coalescence coming out on the side of St. Clair. Walled off. It's going to put FMR in a bit of a rough spot. The Blizzard and the Gravs coming out at the same time from both teams here. And it is all Kettering going to slaughter St. Clair. And they are going to get to this second checkpoint in extremely quick fashion. If they don't contest them here at the doors, it is going to be so much time on the, the time bank here for Kettering's final push. Looks like a mirror there with the May walls and then... Uh ultimate after ultimate, but it looks like Kettering's trying to wall off all entrances. St. Clair pushes on, but it's too little, too late. Although they use their ultimates, uh, looks like Kettering has already captured this point. St. Clair trying to take the point back, although the clock now is five minutes. Yeah, five minutes on the clock, and then, uh, Kettering are completely content just losing that fight, considering they already got the point. Their job here is done. Let's regroup and let's try to get it all the way with five minutes. I mean, you're not relaxing, but you're feeling kind of good about yourself, considering St. Clair had to use their entire time bank to get to that third checkpoint. Exactly. It looks like St. Clair is trying to hide behind the enemy May wall. Uh, Prince oh. Wada is trying to go for the shatter, but it just hits uh, FMR's shield. And who is that? Blacklight is popping the coalescence. But it oh, that was like the go oh. button. Oh, good night, St. Clair. Everybody goes down. Huge wombo combo. Oh, dear. This is going to be an awful overtime round here for St. Clair. One minute to four. Yikes. Wow. That is very unfortunate for St. Clair. Just as we thought St. Clair had uh, the upper hand by capturing all three points, Kettering was like, hold my beer. <laughs> and, Essentially, uh, yeah. Yeah, and finish the the match there with, with four minutes remaining. And St. Clair is going to have to really hold this point. They have to the full hold. I totally forgot since... Um, um, whatchamacallit, Kettering had some time on the clock. St. Clair doesn't get any time. They have to full hold. They cannot even give them a third of the capture point in order to win or bring this to a draw. I really don't know how St. Clair's going to bring this back. Um, this is a hard point to do it. Yeah, exactly. There's just so many ways Kettering can come from onto the point. So we'll see what Strider picks. Will they go for like a cheeky Bastion play maybe? I'm not sure. Um, he's kind of swapping between heroes. It looks like he's settled on McCree. Man, I tell you what, that's switching to the Bastion seems to be what all my silver teammates do and every single time they throw the game. So I definitely <laughs> don't want to see it. But it's just going to be tried and true. Keep to what you know. Just try your best to hold this. Strider going to be going back to the McCree and everybody else seems to be on their comfort heroes. There's not been a lot of Reaper since game number one here from Bailable, but at the same time, he's been doing pretty decent. So we got to see what the heck does Kettering do. They had a fantastic attack here last time. They just have to do a third of that. Bailable gets some crazy Maywalls uh, on defense, so hopefully he can pull that off here. Uh, <laughs> they can't give you a tick of this point away. So St. Clair can't afford to lose anybody. Right now, it looks like they block off. They try to block off the team, but the whole team moves onto the other side of the May Wall. Um, it's just kind of back and forth, trading fire here. 
Prince Wada is trying to protect his entire team. Well, Kettering is going to try to push on a point, but Bailable blocks him off. Uh, uh -oh. Blacklight, Pop Coalesce's Prince Wada goes down. This is very unfortunate for St. Clair. They have to be really careful. They have no shield to hide behind. It looks like Drop gets Yustin, FMR gets Bailable. This is uh, it. And the entire team goes down. That looks like it's going to be the end of this game here. Wow. Kettering University wins this game three. The coalescence just seems like the go button. Blacklight leading the charge for Kettering and are going to secure this one in very nice fashion. Light going to get the play of the game, but we're going to get denied from seeing it. But it is what it is. Back and forth, back and forth. This is what I like to see. But a solid job there from Kettering. Their attack just seems so much more on point compared to St. Clair's. It just seemed like it was, it was staggering a little bit. It was having a hard time, lots of hiccups, and left themselves open to a lot of, like, possible misplays. And Kettering just abused it. Meanwhile, Kettering just went on an absolute tear. What are your thoughts on that one? That <laughs> just, wow, everything just, it, it happens so fast, right? When you think the fight's going to go one way, it, it goes another. And St. Clair is, is is going, it's having a bit of a rough time tonight. But that's what I like to see, because you grow from these uh, um, these tough fights. You really learn um, your limits and what you need to work on with your, your different heroes. And it looks like St. Clair is learning a lot already. I mean, they won the second game, um, but it just wasn't quite enough for this third game. They might be able to bring it back this fourth game, but we'll see. Uh, will we go into the fifth game? We'll see. Maybe Kettering will win on the fourth, but if they don't, then the fifth game will really be anybody's game. It is so hard to learn off of nothing but victories, which is what St. Clair basically had the chance to do this entire preseason. They got a little bit of a shake-up, a little bit of a wake-up call, rather, in the USCA uh, season opener yesterday. And then now they're met up here with Kettering, who, like I was saying in the in the pre-show, um, we're in the same group as Northwood. Northwood looks absolutely fantastic. They're probably the favorites in our NACE group. Kettering brought them to Game 5. That's so, insane. One, the fact that they've done that like shows that they're so much better than last year even. Because I couldn't even remember like their their stats from last year. But St. Clair's keeping up with them, which gives me hope. Because a lot of these these fights are just last second turnarounds. Whether it's an alt just being right there at the right time, or scrappy fights that eventually turn into a certain team's favor. It's close. There's no domination here. And that's what I like to see. Game number four is just about to be around the corner. We're going to Hanamura, so two CP. This is the first time we get to see this this season. Uh, map style that not a lot of people really like. It's a little unforgiving, to say the least. You capture one point, just bulldoze a second one, too. A little map dependent, but at least it's not Anubis. For sure. <laughs> I mean, Hanamura, the first, the first point there, uh, it can be hard to get past the defense but if you do sometimes you can push right on to the next point and cap it uh pretty fast but it can also be difficult to try to break that second point as well because if you allow them time your your enemy team to get situated there it can be really hard to break the defense because they'll hold high ground they'll make sure that they have every exit covered um before you can even break in so we'll see how who's on defense here first I'll see momentarily, but yeah, just to finish off the point, these type of maps, it feels like it's either you get two points, it's a 2-0, or you get full held. There's like no in between. Exactly. And without further ado, game four underway in the beautiful pink nature that is Hanamura. Wow, with it getting colder and starting to become fall here in Windsor, kind of want to go to a nice spring-looking area. <laughs> yeah, personally, I love the cold. So, absolutely love oh. this right now. Can't relate. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it's going to be on defense first. It'll be Kettering. St. Clair looking to get ready with their attack. Having a, a high mobility hero like uh, Strider's Tracer could definitely be an option just to try and avoid that initial choke point. Pull some players off. Meanwhile. I'm surprised we're not seeing Bailable on the Symmetra uh, for the first point here to try to use the TP strat. But maybe they 
they know that uh, Kettering is quite aware that that is a possibility on this map as it's a well-known strategy. So they want to make sure that they don't uh, get stopped and staggered early like that. Yeah, and unfortunately the the plays of, oh, are they just going to dive past it or something like that? Usually most yeah. teams know about that by now. Exactly. They've practiced this, especially since it's not necessarily a map type that everybody is comfortable with. That being said, St. Clair do breach the doors and they're looking to get ready for the first attack. I do like that they went immediately to the high ground, dropping down surrounding Kettering uh, with Strider's Tracer going in behind the uh -oh. team before they could notice. They get walled off of the point there. Uh, Kettering has to be careful because St. Clair is just going to push them. But it looks like Light gets Prince Wada, but Bailable and Seymour get their revenge by taking out both tanks from Kettering University. Seymour and Bailable get more picks on one DPS and one support. And it looks like Blacklight is just barely holding on with his life. Strider manages to get him. Justin cleans up Lex, and it looks like St. Clair caps his first point, possibly, if they can cap it before Kettering gets back. Doesn't look like they're looks coming, so there we go. Yeah, it looks like St. Clair takes this point here. Uh, but we're going to keep going, it looks like, on the side of St. Clair, wasting no time. Are they going to push straight through Main? It's starting to look like it. Yeah, they're going to just go straight. Oh! And to the bottom right. But Kettering's not expecting that. They're expecting them to go top right. St. Clair Oh, sneak. this could be scary, though. Actually, they may oh not know where God, they are. Oh, that's a huge pick right before the team fight even eat or even begins. Stuttering over my words after such a crazy blitz attack coming out from St. Clair. It is all down to FMR and Hydro Seeds, but back like in the background actually, just trying to keep everybody alive. Actually uses it offensively, takes care of Strider. That shatter is just going to smoke the air. Nothing happening there from Wada. So it's one huge resource gone. The Blizzard is going to hang on to this point. It's going to allow them to get the first tick. Actually, never mind. It does get contested last second. So St. Clair technically have no progression on this point if this he team fight does not go well. Grab, there it is. Oh, Draco, however, is going to find Wada right away with that Deadeye. It's looking better and better here for Kettering as they're able to push St. Clair off the point. No progression made. They hold this point soundly. Well, I know that you guys couldn't see me in that, that moment there, but uh, the, as soon as St. Clair snuck up behind them, my jaw hit the floor. I was just speechless. I, didn't, I was not expecting them to sneak up behind Kettering like that. Like the side view that we got there, it's almost uh, comical. Yeah, uh, Lex on... May. May isn't a hero that like usually has to worry about getting jumped on and one shot <laughs> wombo combo because yeah, exactly. you got ice block that exactly. was such a stealthy play that they were able to blow up a May before reacting to an ice block that is They're very impressive to jam, though. but it looks like light caught onto it early Kenner oh jumping on there we go Apostle pops a beat though to try to save his team both coalescence being fired. Actually, my bad. One coalescence being fired. Uh, oh. and a huge shatter and a diva bomb from Light. And it looks like it's going to take out Seymour Yustin. And Lex gets a pick oh. on Prince Wada. FMR available. And it looks like St. Clair is forced to regroup. That shatter got pretty well everybody in that corner. Brutal spot. <laughs> yeah. They were not able to be sneaky that time. They had one member on the low ground scouting that out. And it was perfect timing. Nicely done there from the Kettering squad. In the same position, St. Clair's going to have to try and think of another route. Exactly. What is that uh, saying? You know, fool me once kind of oh. thing. And then fool me twice and I'm the I'm the dumb one or something like that. I'm not quite sure. But it looks like Kettering was quite intelligent and learned from their mistakes the first time. FMR with two picks early on Prince Wada and Justin. Okay, so... Let's look like Seymour. I mean, they were trying to get cheeky. They were trying to split people off. But if anything, they just split each other off. And then you have to also deal with Lex's uh, ice wall. So, that considering that was a 6v6, that sure as heck did not feel like it. Yeah. Looks we like got some switches. trying to regroup. Oh, we got the Reaper from uh, Strider now. With Bailable still on the May. Kettering, I think, is going to keep with the same strat as it's working well for them. I mean, we've seen Bailable on the Reaper earlier, but unfortunately the positioning was just not in his favor. We're going to see Strider try and pick this up. And, of course, like, 
Strider's a bit of a, or Reaper's a bit of a frontline DPS, but he can't be the first one onto the point. Meanwhile, the Blizzard is on point here. This is from St. Clair's side. We still have Lexes if he wants to fire it off for the side of Kettering. Kamehameha right through the center of Hanamura. And okay, somebody just got completely yeeted up into the building. The dead Prince corpse Wada, of Wada. Coming. Little did he know he was going skydiving here today. And little did St. Clair know that Shatter was ready. Nicely done there from FMR as they clean up this point. Just a matter of dealing with Seymour. And that will be the case. Billable goes down as well, and it's going to be Wada running for the base. Looks like St. Clair just needs to not panic right now, although they have a minute and a half left. That's still more than enough time for a few pushes onto Kettering. Uh, Kettering is going to go back up onto that high ground, it looks like, prepare for St. Clair. Yeah, right back to the high ground. I mean, this has been working for them so far. And to be honest, the play style from St. Clair, the team composition, it wants to go head on. So they can't be shooting from the bottom up to the top with them. They're not going to have any effectiveness in the slightest. So it's either we're going to get the better position, we'll have the high ground, and get picks like that before team fights even start. Bailable down wow. again. Drock on point with his shots. Starting to get deja vu from game one, where they were able to pick off Bailable consistently before fights could even start, forcing St. Clair to regroup. Uh, but hopefully St. Clair can uh, get back together real quick here. They have 30 seconds left, so this is probably their last push for the, for the game. If they don't make this, then uh, they're only going to be able to cap that first point. This is rough. It's either it's all on Seymour's grav. Oddly enough, there's still three four alts on the side of Kettering. So this is definitely not looking good for St. Clair. We've got dead eyes. We've got diva bombs, and we have no support or front line. They're going to try the center way or anyway, but it is not going to be successful. Kettering, making me eat my words. Oh, it's either two O or two or uh, O two. Uh, nah, we'll we'll give him one. <laughs> Exactly. St. Clair needs to full hold or, uh, you know, or else they're going to end up losing here unless they can hold them at the second point and not give them any space on the second point. Initiating match. Yeah, they, that was just overall perfect defense on the side of Kettering. They had all the resources they needed for that last fight, and then their positioning, even though they were caught su by surprise on that first attack, they gave up nothing for it. So I guess no harm, no foul. And yeah, the whole uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Shame on me, exactly. They, no shame for them today. They learned, they adjusted, and they conquered that second point. Exactly. It looks like Kettering is trying to figure out what they want to do for this uh, this composition for the, the first point. It looks like they want to go a little bit more of that uh, dive comp, and it looks like Lex is going to pull out that sim strat. I don't know if they're going to stick with it. Brock is trying to choose if he wants to go Bash or Echo. It seems to settle on the Echo. Lex going to get rid that of Symmetra. Could be messy. Oh. This is why I hate oh. trying to do analysis before we actually get started, because they're all over the place. But at the same time, the idea still seems the same. A dive composition coming out here from Kettering. Try and blitz that first point and possibly just keep steamrolling forward. Exactly. It looks like they're going to settle with that Ryan Diva uh, and the Reaper Sim. So it looks like they're going to try to go for a TP. If St. Clair has seen the Symmetra, which they obviously have, it looks like they're going to start recruiting back to point. Repair. Thankfully, there were at least a little bit of members on the point at the time. They were able to readjust their positioning before any progression got put onto that score, um, onto the scoreboard. Six six. Everybody on point, ready to go. Seymour gets first blood, takes care of Lex right away, and Strider is going to assist with the cleanup. Available on the board as well. And this first, this first attack getting shut down nice and quick by Saint Clair. St. Clair is really doing their best to get ready to full hold here. As you can see, Bailable is on the May again. Uh, and as we've seen, his defense, his defensive May walls have been quite good. So it looks like him and Wada are going to be like that front line, that wall that uh, hopefully stops Kettering so they can try to, to have some sort of fighting uh -oh. chance here. Hey, there's no shield here, right? It's completely uncontested. Why don't you come walk through that door? I don't have a shatter ready to go. <laughs> 
Exactly. Although, it looks like they're trying to get them to come through. Yeah, like, oh, we're, we'll let you in. That's fine. You don't need a teleporter. It's just a matter of having the dead eye ready. Strider gonna fire it off, but Blacklight's gonna be the one actually securing the kills. We do have the Shatter coming out. I don't think it was necessarily super effective, however. It's gonna be Wada. Just, unfortunately, not snagging anybody there. But I think it's a 5v5. No, 6v5 as we move forward. The Blizzard coming out from Bailable gonna make things messy, but the Diva Bomb on top of it from Light is gonna make it even squirrelier. Seymour has this grab ready if he wants to try and group them up all together. Looking for it, but he does have to be careful. Light could easily gobble up that. Never mind. Drock's going to make the first switch the entire game. Switching over to Reaper. I totally missed that. And he's going to make that Death Blossom count. Seymour's just going to hang on to this. They're giving up the point, but they're not going to give up the game by blowing all of their resources. St. Clair needs to hold on to this next point here and not give a single tick if they want to have a chance at going into game five. Um... Uh, or to go into the next uh, the next round of game four, my bad. Gosh, the one time we see Jirok switch and it is right on point. They're walking right through the front door. They don't care in the slightest. Coalescence duel happening in the background. The shatter is going right into Wada Shield. So that is blocked. However, Seymour Seymour is going to be the first casualty here. Back and forth, here comes the Blizzard as well from Lex, and that is going to catch Strider off guard. Hydra Seed's also getting himself on the scoreboard, taking out Wada and Justin. St. Clair might have just lost this one. This one could be the series, too, if they manage to take care of it. Seymour doing his best <laughs> um, emergency Hammond impression here. But back and forth, Wada comes in with the Shatter. Not enough. It only catches light. That doesn't matter. The... Bomb from Strider got gobbled up by Light as well. Nothing went into the favor of St. Clair that time. Kettering University going to take care of this set 3-1. to one. Wow, that entire series of games was just constant back and forth. Like, I really didn't know who was going to win. Uh, but it looks like Kettering came out on top by just a hair. Holy moly. <laughs> I'm like sweating from that, like, <laughs> my goodness. In that last team fight, my voice might have just very well said nope on me. So sorry about that, but it <laughs> seemed like I just stopped randomly. But yeah, that was just because it was such a, a great set overall. It was nice having such back and forth action. Unfortunately here for St. Clair, once again, this is going to be their second loss on a row here. Well, w first for Nace, but then they had the one yesterday in UCEA. So the competition level here in some of these collegiate events are... Uh, starting to excite me a little bit for sure this was i felt like i was watching overwatch league i mean i'm, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the overwatch league and i was just right in there as if it was a pro level match i mean it might as very well be like these could be future contenders players for all i care like they're very very skilled players on both teams and they give us such an interesting match to watch and commentate today and i hope to see a rematch sometime in the future absolutely of course in this NACE group stage, we have to play everybody once. So we started everything off um, earlier this week when we got to play Cottony, or Cotty rather. And we took care of that one, but we still have at least six more matches, I believe, in this group phase before we even think about the playoff bracket. And you never know, with the way Kettering is playing... I think it's supposed to be the top three or top four. I'll have to double check that. But if it is the top three, I could imagine this group turning into Northwood, Kettering, Saints. And there's always the possibility that we have to play one of our own group mates at some point during that tournament. And then I'd love to see the run back. GG's to Kettering. Solid job. And of course, props to the Saints as well. They played well. Just a little more, or not a little more practice, but of course it's going to be a little bit more practice. But some things didn't go their way today. But thankfully, you've got VODs and replays to double check where it went wrong. And we'll see what you can pull off next week. Because we'll probably see them sometime next week. I can actually confirm that. I have a schedule for you. Let's take us through it. Perfect. So it looks like Friday we're going to have the Collegiate Rainbow Six Week 3 versus Marietta College, if I'm saying that right. Uh, Saturday... We're having Rocket League, the Spirit Esports Tournament, Monday, and going into next week for Monday. Uh, we have the UCEA Rocket League season opener. Tuesday, 
UCEA Counter-Strike season opener. Wednesday, more UCEA Overwatch. So you'll see more of our wonderful Overwatch Saints team going back for match two. Thursday is more Rocket League for with UCEA. And Friday is a Collegiate R6 regular season, week four. Yeah, you, if you've gotten into the pattern of certain games being on certain days, well, next week is going to absolutely throw everything out the window. <laughs> of course, those are the matches that are technically scheduled for now. Of course, always subject to change or teams just straight up not showing up. You know how that is. But um, some of these days for collegiate esports, like Saints, I think on Monday, for example, they have four or five matches all at 8 o'clock and then one at 7 o'clock. It's like, how do you keep track of all that? So the nice thing is we're going to do our very best to diversify as much as possible here on the Saints stream. So if you got used to a certain team being on a certain day, be sure to come back and check the schedule here because uh, that very well could not be the case. Best way to keep track of that, actually, follow the social medias. Saints Gaming, CA, Facebook, Twitter, and watch the VODs on YouTube or Twitch and support the squad. They're, they're working hard. They're putting on a show, regardless of the result. And we're having a lot of fun doing it. Commander, thank you once again for commentating some Overwatch. For just starting off, you're doing fantastic, and I hope you keep keep it up. Thank you. And just before we leave here, uh, I'd like to give one more thank you to our sponsors. Uh, again, that would be St. Clair College, St. Clair Col College Student Representative Council, St. Clair Alumni Association, Zuckerman School of Business and IT, PC Outlet, and Tim Hortons. Perfect. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And one, of course, one other thank you I want to throw out to everybody in the chat. I may not see you exactly right now, but I know you're there. Thank you for supporting the squad and making this dream a reality for us alongside our sponsors. Now, that's it for us tonight. Um, follow us below on our social medias if you want to keep up with our esports antics or possibly some, uh, some art from Amanda. Fantastic work <laughs> you got going on there. Thank you. And... This week ain't over. We got Rainbow Six tomorrow. Be sure to see you there. Have a good night, everybody.